Good evening, everyone. This is Arthur Robinson Jr. I am the creator of PowerfulInterviews.com. I want to welcome each and every one of you to this video. In this video, you're going to experience life-changing information that you won't find anywhere else. I have another special interview for you with a great friend of mine. His name is Rand Brenner. And Rand Brenner, he specializes in licensing intellectual property. In this interview, you're going to hear in detail how you can license intellectual property. You're going to hear about how you can license intellectual property from college universities. And also, Rand Brenner is going to talk about in detail how he was behind the powerful brand Morphin Power Rangers and the great phenomena Batman, which grossed over $1 billion dollars and merchandise retail sales, and much, much more. So right about now, go get your pen and your pad, sit back and relax, and write down some notes. In this interview that I'm going to reveal to you with my great friend, Rand Brenner, in regards to intellectual property, is going to change your life. So check it out. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Arthur Robinson, Jr., and today I have another special interview just for you. Today I'm going to be interviewing a powerful man, and he's a great friend of mine. His name is Rand Brenner. And for those that don't know Mr. Rand, let me elaborate to you about him. Rand Brenner has over 25 years experience in entertainment licensing and consumer products. He had an extensive career in the entertainment industry working with hundreds of consumer products and services companies and the licensing of numerous high profile entertainment properties. Key among the properties he licensed was the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TV show a worldwide licensing phenomenon, and two Power Rangers movies produced in conjunction with 20th Century Fox Film Corporation that grossed over $3 billion in worldwide retail merchandise sales. In the motion pictures, Batman and Batman 2, Warner Brothers, which grossed over $1 billion in retail merchandise sales. And that is an awesome resume. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome Rand Brenner to the call. Hello, Arthur. How are you? It's good to be here. Well, I'm doing great and it's getting better each and every single day. Great. And I would like to thank you once again for taking time out your busy schedule to educate my listeners about licensing and intellectual property. I gladly appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. I always enjoy coming out and sharing some insight and opportunity with uh, folks, especially when it comes to what they can do with intellectual property and licensing. Okay, so what I would like to know, and can you educate my listeners in regards to who you are, and can you talk about your background, like Batman and Power Rangers, and how did that all come about? Well, it's um, always a good starting point to talk about entertainment licensing. I mean, my background is I spent uh, a number of years, as you had um, introduced, I was at Warner Brothers Consumer Products during the first two Batman movies and then Saban Entertainment during the height of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And uh, while I was at the studios, I worked with all the major and minor consumer products and services companies in developing all of the uh, products around or based on these um, movie icons, the trademarks, the characters, the images. And what I did while I was at the studios is I basically went out and uh, uh, developed deals with various entrepreneurs, small businesses, large corporations who were interested in using licensing to acquire the rights to these um, uh, entertainment intellectual property. And, you know, let me say right here that when you look at entertainment, entertainment is by its very nature intellectual property, all forms of, of entertainment, whether it's publishing or music, movies, TV shows, it is all intellectual property. And by that, by virtue of being intellectual property, it means that you have um, opportunities to develop multiple revenue streams around your intellectual property. And the way that that is developed is through 
uh, a process called licensing. Now, let me back up and say, in order to create this intellectual property, because that's where it starts creation, it begins with an idea, which comes out of your mind. Your listeners' minds all have ideas, and these could be inventions, they could be books, plays, software, hardware, uh, TV shows, whatever the case is, and then from there they're developed into an intellectual property by virtue of a legal process in which you register it uh, through various government organizations such as the Office of uh, Trademarks and Patents or, or I mean, I'm sorry, the Office of Trademarks and Copyrights or um, a patent office. And they then um, become what is known as an intellectual property, okay? They have uh, assigned to it intellectual property rights and basically it um, secures for the owner, for you the owner, if you own that intellectual property, certain rights to it. And based on now having an intellectual property, established an intellectual property that's been recognized, you're now in a position to start to develop value and use licensing to commercialize it. The term commercialization means to make money with it. And I should also point out here that when I talk about licensing and entertainment in particular, that licensing is, is what I call a two-way street, meaning you can license out if you have an intellectual property. And I'll, I'll simplify the terms here. An intellectual property is much like being a property owner, a real estate property owner, which is interesting when you consider that real estate is known as property and intellectual assets are also known as intellectual property. They're both property, and intellectual property licensing functions much like real estate. And I'll give you some specific examples about that. So in the case of being a property owner, you can now do several things with your intellectual property. You can, you can make it yourself. You can create the, whatever the product or service is or publish the book or make the movie or whatever the case is. You could sell the idea or the intellectual property to a third party or another person. Or you could use licensing and, in essence, rent out the rights, rent out the intellectual, the commercialization rights, the money-making rights to uh, a third party. And so when I take it back to the uh, real estate example, so with real estate, you acquire real estate and you fix it up and you can do several things with it. You can either sell it or you can lease it out, rent it, if you will, okay? And it's basically the same process with a little differentiation in the way that the contracts work, but that's essentially uh, what you can do. And so you as the property owner, the intellectual property owner, you own the property, you license it out to somebody and they become your tenant, if you will or known as a licensee. You're the licensor, the licensee. If you're the property owner, you are the tenant. You know, if you own real estate, I mean, you're the um, landlord, and the person that you rent the property to is a tenant. So I share that as a way, because mo uh, many people are, are probably more familiar with the real estate process as opposed to the licensing process, but if you think of it in those terms, they're very, very similar in the way they work. Now, if you are an entrepreneur or a small business and you don't have an intellectual property, uh, you can use licensing to acquire an intellectual property, okay? You can rent an intellectual property, if you will. And that's the beauty of licensing is there are so many ways in which you can operate with it. And by the way, I should also say that licensing is very flexible. There's many cases where you may own an intellectual property and you may license out parts of it and make other parts yourself. And the same thing holds true when you license in or acquire rights. You may license all or part of the rights to an intellectual property to be able to commercialize them. Now, in talking about entertainment, entertainment is probably one of the most visible forms of intellectual property out there. Obviously, you see it in movies and TV shows and you read about it. And so by its very nature, it has um, the um, ability to be what's licensed or leveraged into multiple revenue streams. Now, I had the opportunity to work on two very, very large entertainment properties, Batman and Power Rangers, and those demonstrate the tremendous upside that can be created from a um, revenue standpoint in terms of these big entertainment properties where you've got the movies or the TV shows and then built in around it, you've got your DVDs and your products and your live shows and your, you know, theme rides and your cereals and your fast food and your tattoos and underwear and socks and toys and you name it, it goes on and on and on and basically what you're...